his church in a real and decisive way today. And he's preparing his church for the rapture that is to come. Those who are truly gods cannot remain silent any longer. And as the scripture says, those who are filthy, let the filthy remain filthy. God is coming down and he is going to try his church in a way that you and I have not experienced in our lifetime. Or in modern times. I believe the church has been silent. So long. On so many issues. But I'm not discouraged as I stand here this morning. I'm not discouraged at all. But I am broken. And I want us to know that we cannot be silent anymore. You know, I kind of was floating for a title, and I came up with the sin of silence. One that most of us probably never even think about. The great sin of silence. The great sin of not speaking when we ought to speak. The great sin of not sharing Christ when we ought to share Christ. I want us to know right off the bat this morning that if we're looking for a government to make things right, stop looking. That is not a disrespect for government before we are told to obey and to submit. But here I tell you there's a line that we got to draw in the sand. For Peter says, shall I obey God or shall I obey man? Amen. So when he says that we should obey all the laws of man, that's not an absolute. That's not an absolute. It is an absolute up to the point when man thinks he's God. Then it's better and required for us to obey God. Because of the, 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 the difficulty of this, this decision that has been made this week on same-sex marriage, and, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm going to be honest with you, I just, I, my mind was going everywhere. So you may find my mind still going everywhere this morning. But I will try to put something together that I believe God would have us to, to grab a hold of today. As we look at this sin of silence, I, I, I will put together some things that will help us to realize where we're at today. We hadn't faced this before. And I, I just hope we understand that. We hadn't faced this before. And time is running out. If there's any hope for our children, now's the time not to be silent. I kind of was focused a little bit here on that Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. Where it says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The question that immediately came to my mind when I read this passage with fresh eyes was that the church has been silent too long and has committed a, a very, very serious sin, the sin of silence. When we ought to have been preaching the gospel, we've been out trying to find a political solution. We've been turning to those who have political power and not turning to the one who's got all power in heaven and in earth. <laughs> Our answers aren't here. They're in Christ. 
His kingdom is not here. We've allowed so many things to creep into the church unawares to, to the point that the sanctuary of the living God is no longer a special place that we come to. It's just an empty space that is turned to an inter entertainment center. I, I don't want to go back and say the, the good old days, but I want to tell you something. This, sometimes we need to go back to something. Maybe we need to go back to that point when we walked into the sanctuary of the, of the Lord that, 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 boy, something came over us and there was a reverence uh, that came over us and we understood that this was a special place for God. We don't see that anymore, do we? Where the glory of God rests upon us, oh, God, have mercy and not put Ichabod the glory of God has gone on that which is called by His name. The sanctuary was a place where we could come and there was an expectation that I, here's a place I'm going to meet in a special time with my God and I can have an intimate time with my God that those days have gone by. The days when we could trust those who have supposedly been entrusted with the word we come in a sanctuary now and we come with guarded hearts not sure what we're going to hear all of this is because the church has been silent for so long and allowed so many things to creep into what is called the house of God. You're no longer the church that is, it reflects the glory of God. She reflects the glory of this world. Do you know that? And we wonder and we talk about and we condemn and we put down those who, who just, they don't want to be part of this. I don't blame them. Don't blame them. But we, need to, we can change all that. It's not just about what's wrong. It's about identifying what's wrong. If you go to your doctor because you've got this pain in your body and it, it's just been there for some time and you can't shake it and all of the Advil in the world ain't doing you no good. You want to know what's wrong. But you just don't want him to tell you what's wrong you want him to tell you how to fix it, don't you? But you got to know what's wrong before we can move on to fixing it. We are called the church, not just the pastors. We're called to shut the mouth of gainsayers. But church, guess what? They've shut our mouths. We get out and about and, and we're ashamed. We, 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 well, we don't want to, we don't want to offend nobody. We don't want to push nobody from God. I'm so sick of hearing that. I don't know what to do. Where are we going to push them to? They're already on the way to hell. Where, where are we going to push them to? When they're already lost, where are we going to push them to? Maybe. God might just use us in that instance of our inadequacy. To show himself. Even through our inabilities. How serious is this problem of silence? You know, Mark 8.38 tells us, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me, and my words, me and my words. In this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory of his Father with his holy angels. And then Matthew 10, 33 says this more direct. 
But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Are we silent because we're ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Is that why we're silent? Are we silent because we're in fear? Not fear of the consequence necessarily of sharing the gospel, but we don't, we're, we're, we're protecting our reputation. We don't want people to think we that sold out. God needs some sold out people today. You know that? God needs just a handful of folks who will say, you know what? I can tell just from my life, life ain't worth it without God. Just from my own struggles, I can say, life ain't worth it without Him. And when I come to understand who Jesus Christ is and what He did for me, I know my life ain't worth it. And His is worth all of mine and a million more like it. Are we ashamed of the gospel? Is that why we don't share it so quickly? Are we ashamed of the gospel? Is that why we have not allowed it to take hold and take root in our own lives? I'm not just speaking the gospel, but I'm a walking gospel. And that gospel says what? Jesus Christ not only broke the power of sin in my life, but Jesus Christ showed that he will not tolerate sin in my life. Is that what my life looks like when I go out into the world? You know something, church? It is easier to, pro to proclaim that I'm a Christian and use that as one's religion than it is to confess that we're followers of Jesus Christ. We will tell somebody, I'm going to drill deep today and let us know where we're at. You know, we'll tell somebody I'm a Christian. Because in this world today, that is an undefined term. It is a safe term. We, we don't want to say Jesus. Because we may have to defend it. And at that point in time, the Spirit of God may come upon us and He might get to talking to us and say, there's only one way. It might come out of our mouth to say, there's no other way to the Father but through Him. Which in, by implication says, every other way is wrong. That's the only way you can interpret John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes to the Father but by me. If that's true, then every other way is wrong. That's part of the gospel, church. See, a man has to know he's going in the wrong way before he turns to the right way. So you can't come up here and try to make it, well, that's my way. I'm so tired of some of our religious leaders, you know, they, they get on the television and, and they got the camera going and the bright lights going and the makeup on and, boy, they're looking so smug and pug. And they say, well, Jesus, well, it's not for me. Well, what does that mean? That's a nice way of saying it's the only way for me, but there might be other ways. Church, we're, are you seeing where I'm going? Ashamed of the gospel. Ashamed to just lay it down and say, he is the only way. Because we're afraid that that newscaster is going to say to us, well, does that mean every other way is wrong? <laughs> See, you, you can't say Jesus is the only way and then say, but, but, but that doesn't mean they're wrong. Yeah, they're wrong. Yes, they are wrong. I do not present that as something that we need to go out and argue that is a statement of fact if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a truth, an eternal truth, if we believe on the name of Jesus Christ. Saying I'm a Christian don't mean nothing to nobody out there. I want to let you know that if we don't know that. Saying I'm a follower of Jesus Christ because he is the only way. 
to the Father. He is not a teller of truth. He is the truth. He is the embodiment of truth. And everything about him is true. Are you with me? <laughs> then that makes everything else a lie. <laughs> can't be silent no more. We're going to have to decide, amen. I can't decide for you and you can't decide for me. But, but we're going to have to decide because God has, has given us a sign, church. I believe it. I don't stand here as a prophet trying to predict this and the other. But the scripture says in the last days we're going to see this kind of stuff going on. He says don't be chasing signs and wonders, but don't be ignorant of the sign of the times either. Know that the time is growing near when you see these things. And as it grows near, we don't need a church that's silent. Are you all with me today? Huh? We seem to be ashamed to preach the word of God. Professing Christians are ashamed to be identified with Christ. We want to talk a game. Amen? We want to get that book and this book because we got to keep up with the language. You <laughs> see? But when it comes to our walk, Titus says, we're just reprobates. They profess to know them, but in every good work. Well, what's the good work? It says, in every good work, reprobate. What's the good work? The good work is God has begun a good thing in us. The good work is the work of God that is working in us to bring forth the, the, the image of Christ in us. That's the good work. Not the works of our little puny hands, but the works of God as he uses our puny hands to his glory. To his glory. <laughs> it is amazing that the highest office in this land would stand up before the masses and preach such a biblically sounding message. While the light, while the White House is celebrating same-sex marriage. Church, there, there's something fundamentally wrong with that. A lot of people get pulled in. Well, well, look at this person and look at this. But what we see is going on every Sunday all across this nation. Talking one thing and living another. Using the very scriptures to deceive folks into believing, look here, I'm with you. I'm part of you. Yet you are Christian, but are you following Christ? Are you a follower of Christ? Oh, what an opportunity to stand up and proclaim Jesus Christ. Oh, heart's broken. You just don't know. You just don't know seeing all of that and all these 5,000 people and nobody's talking about Jesus. Nobody. All these men of God and nobody. We've been silenced, church, too long. We've been duped too many times. You know, Jesus will never dupe us. He'll never deceive us if we just follow him. If we just get our eyes off this old stinking world. If we get our eyes off of a political system that's just going to grind itself into nothingness. If he's the truth, why are we seeking something else? Why? If he's the truth, why aren't we telling somebody else? He's the truth. Why aren't we experiencing it in our own lives? How does one stand and give such compassionate and stirring 
You know, Jesus says if it was possible, the very elect, elect, uh, the elect could be fooled. And I guarantee you some of the elect was fooled. <laughs> and at best confused, like, well, maybe. How can this happen? How can this be, church? The scriptures throughout, the, especially the New Testament, tells us how it's going to happen. It can only happen one way. It can only happen because the spirit of the Antichrist is at work who will raise himself up to be what he ain't. He is a deceiver. He is a liar. He deceiveth the whole world. We talk about and we outline and but what the Antichrist going look to look like after we gone. And don't realize the spirit of the Antichrist is here and at work right now. Didn't say he was the Antichrist. But the spirit, in other words, it, he, it's the same language. <laughs> they, they talk in the same stuff. See, in the end, the Antichrist is going to set himself up as God. Well, we, we ain't that far along just yet. But we're close. When you can give that kind of a stirring message and at the same time put a stamp on same-sex marriage, that is a nail in the coffin. Some of us might think I'm talking politics. I'm not talking politics. I'm trying to bring the real world to the scriptures and the scriptures to the real world that you and I live in every day. So we can start forming some different thoughts. Amen? You see, the, you see there's, a, there's a lot of conversations that go on where you and I walk over this situation. I want to arm you up so you know how to talk. <laughs> you know, I want to arm you up so that when the Holy Ghost come in there and want to put something in your mouth, you know that's him talking. <laughs> so you can't present my argument. I wouldn't want you to do that. But the Holy Ghost told, uh, Jesus told his disciples, now when, 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 they, when, they, when they pull you up there, don't you worry about what you're going to say. <laughs> I'm going to put some words in your mouth, see <laughs> But we have to be open to that. We got to be open and sensitive to the fact that if I'm in that situation, I don't need to get scared about running somebody off. I need to know, God, go on, do it now. <laughs> you know? Oh, mama used to say, go on. <laughs> go on, do it, Lord. <laughs> That's how that happens, church. And we've seen it with our own eyes we've seen it with our own eyes when the world says that they speak well of you when everybody speaks well of you watch out because what does the scripture say they spoke well of the false prophets too amen folk don't like to hang around with a guy like me <laughs> not very popular anywhere But you know what? I'm hanging out with him. <laughs> How about you? Amen. Let, let him know. I don't have to be popular down here, see? Because if I'm popular down here, something wrong. <laughs> I want to be with that great, that great cloud of witnesses that's up yonder. I want to be popular with them. Because <laughs> they've walked this walk. And they talk, they walk. And now they're up there. Looking down, perhaps. <laughs> Amen. And saying to us, run good. Man, they just cheering us on. Keep going. You, you, keep going. Keep going. You winning. You winning. Keep going. <laughs> Are you with me this morning? I want to change our thinking, friends. <laughs> that we can't be silent no more. Be like Paul said, I'm compelled by the love of Christ. 
woe to me if I don't do this. You know I'm saying that? There's so much love in me for God that to not do this, I would just have to crucify him afresh. Woe is me. That's just, I couldn't even get there from here. I want us to be like that at the point of contact where it's no longer an option. My reputation, it's no longer, I'm worried about what they're going to say about me, how they're going to look at me. Who do you think you are? <laughs> are you, is somebody out there? Who do we think we are? You know, leaders like that we see today remind me of the sins of Jeroboam who did evil in the sight of the Lord. And then the scripture says, who caused Israel to commit sin and it caused God to be provoked. I want you to know this morning without a shadow of doubt a shadow of doubt that the recent action by our Supreme Court of these here United States that made same-sex marriage a law has stirred up the anger of the Lord. Let there be absolutely no doubt about that. God is not sitting up there. Don't let it come out your mouth. Don't let it get in your brain allowing things to happen. We don't have to make excuses for God. Amen? God is working out his redemptive plan of which I don't understand all of it, but I only understand he told me to go and preach the gospel. So that's his plan. I'm going to go do that. The rest of it, I'll leave it up to him. I can't figure out how he's going to turn this mess to his glory, but he is. Church, can I get an amen right yonder? He going to turn this to his glory. I'm not down, though I'm broke. I'm not discouraged. I'm fearful for those who aren't, don't have enough sense to be a scared for themselves of what is yet to come. Hmm. Jesus said that in this environment, of willful deception. He said it in Matthew 24. He said, you know what? Iniquity is going to abound. Over in Romans 6, 19, he adds this. Iniquity unto iniquity. You know what that means? It means it's piling up. <laughs> you know, when you go to the bank and you put money in there, and if you're interested in how much interest, you know, they'll talk about something called compound interest. That means your interest is compounding. So you put a couple of bucks in there, you got some interest on that. Well, next year, you, got, you get interest on the interest. That's compounding it. That's building it up. So you not just got your principal, but you have this interest that's compounding itself on top of this. That's what's going on today. We got sin compounding pounding itself, growing itself, enlarging itself, expanding itself, and without restraint. And you and I ain't going to stop it. And anybody who comes along and says that they can, they're a liar. I'm going to just tell you that. You say, now, wait a minute, you done just went too far here. I ain't went far enough yet. <laughs> There ain't nothing in here that told me things are going to get better. For all that we do, if we get it right, if we start going out and we start preaching the gospel, all we're going to do is pull some out of the fire. That's all we're going to do. This stinking world ain't going to get no better. This country ain't going to get no better. Are y'all with me? Iniquity unto iniquity we learned in Isaiah how the whole head is sick, right down to the feet. The whole thing's messed up. Religion ain't getting it no more, church. We either got to settle it in our mind who we following 
or are we going to have a problem? See, I don't know where anybody's at in their life but me. And I'm always checking me. <laughs> hey, are you with me here? Now, I'll be looking out for you because I'm your pastor. I'm supposed to look out for you, but I'm checking me. Each one of us better be checking ourselves. Am I on the straight and narrow? Or am I not? And that's not, a, that's not a question I can just answer with a yes or no. I got to do some examination. I got to start looking at my life and start saying, now, what, what direction is my life going? Before I answer that question, because it'll answer it for me. Are you with me? Huh. You know, Romans 1.16 also gives us a reason why we, we must not be silent any longer. For it, the gospel, is the power of God. The power of God. <sighs> Unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and to the Greek. Huh. You know what it says in verse 15, 17? The gospel actually reveals two great truths. One in 17 says, for therein, therein meaning in the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The gospel reveals the righteousness of God. I'm not justified. My, I'm not justified by me standing up here telling you I'm saved. I'm not justified by standing up here telling you I'm a Christian. I'm not justified by that. You see, I'm justified by faith. What does that mean? It means that I'm standing here and I can claim to be in Christ because Jesus, I believe what God did in Jesus and based on what he did, I believe that and therefore I stand here and say I'm in Christ. But it don't stop there. <laughs> Anybody could do that. Amen? If any man be in Christ... He a new creature. All things pass away. But it's that three letter word that sometimes gets us. All. All things. All things. All things are passed away. They're behind me now. So I got to look down in my life and I got I to gotta say now I met the man. I, I believe what Jesus says. Now let me start looking back and see what direction my life's going. Let me check out my path to see if what he says is true. Am I indeed a new creature? Does sin still have dominion over me or not? Because he said it wouldn't have dominion over me. Amen? Am I lying to myself talking about I, I just don't know, I'm just struggling. Oh no, God says all power is given to me in heaven and earth. All power. And I just put that power in you through the gospel that has broken that. Amen. Now as God, see when it says the, 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 this righteousness means God's right. Is God right? Is God right when he said that old things have passed away, all things become new. Was he right in your life? See, that's what we got to look at. It. Were you right, Lord? <laughs> Are y'all with me today? No government is above the laws of God. Amen. Governments are accountable to God for the manner in which they rule. But because they're ministers of God. But all ministers of God don't do what God tells them to do. And they will be held accountable for that. Not only does it reveal the righteousness of God, this great gospel, but it also does something else. It, it reveals what? In verse 18, the very wrath of God. And it's revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness, ungodliness, and unrighteousness of men. See, that's how we can stand up and, and, and bloviate. You like that word? You know what it means? Go look it up. <laughs> 
And you know what I'm saying? We can all just give it some lip service here. But it says that this is a ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. This is what allows a person to stand up, open up the Bible, and preach like they've never preached before, and yet walk contrary to what they know or claim to know the truth is. That's the ungodliness of men. Do you think they don't know what they're doing? Oh, no, my friends. They know exactly what they're doing. That's the scary part about it. They think we stupid. Who are we, Christians? That's what they think. And if you don't believe it, wait, get close to the election to see how many of them turn Christian. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> and we'll be thinking, well, you know, it's not so bad. Christ did not say, Christ did not say, I'm working through the political system to bring about my father's redemptive plan. Hello? That just wiped out a whole bunch of faces, didn't it? You know what some of them I'm talking about, too. But I ain't going to say nothing. Because you already know. He says, I'm going to advance the gospel in my people who are called by my name. He said, I'm going to advance my gospel. You see, I got some sheep, and my sheep know my voice. And listen here, my sheep follow me. They not out there preaching great sermons. You, you will not identify my sheep that way. You'll identify my sheep because they follow me. Are you with me today? And see, God says I'm a holy God, which means there's no sin in him. So if a man is standing up talking about the grace of God, and yet the, he got this ungodly thing going on, you know that ain't a man of God. See, that's not my assessment. That's applying the scripture to what I'm hearing. Because the scripture says, try the spirits and see whether they be a God. I'm telling you how to do that. If we work on emotions, we're going to get pulled in. But try the spirit. Amen. It says, prove all things and hold on to what is true. You got to do that right now. Don't start when you walk. That's got to be the truth right now. How you know I'm telling you the truth? If I'm not walking in it and proving out, yeah, that's right. That is scripture. That's not him talking. <laughs> that's not him offering up his slant on this business. God will judge this nation. Some of us ask ourselves, maybe, will God judge America? And this is a real argument that's going on out there in the world today. Will God, in this dispensation of grace, last week we heard a lot about grace, didn't we? And it gave us a warm feeling. We heard a lot about love, didn't we? And we said, all right. And then we got the feeling, well, maybe I'm on the wrong side of this argument. I'm going to pull you back a little bit. <laughs> Amen. Grace never overwrites God's holiness. You want me to say that again? Grace never overwrites or overturns God's holiness. Amen? Don't listen to the rhetoric. <laughs> well, let me answer some of this from Isaiah 26, 10. Listen to what it says. Let favor be shown to the wicked. You know what that is? That's grace. Yet will he not learn righteousness. So God is saying, in spite of all this grace that's being talked about, all this grace that is known. People know I'm a God of grace. They know I'm a God of love. They know I'm, I'm a God of, of, of mercy. Yet he will not learn righteousness, says Isaiah 26.10. He knows my grace, but he will not live in it. He will abuse my, right, my grace by doing what is not right. 
He continues, he says, yet he will not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness will he deal unjustly. He knows what's right, but he doesn't do it. Ignorant. And will not behold the majesty of the Lord. Great Gugamuga. Do you see what we're seeing happening right before our eyes? Right before our eyes. God says, I didn't reveal this to the princes of this world, but I've revealed it to babes. I didn't reveal this to the intellectuals, but I gave it to babes. Ain't you glad you're a babe in Christ? Aren't you glad? You don't have to go out and, 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 and get a professorship over at Harvard to understand this stuff. Oh, glory to God. America's turned its nose up and has acted presumptuously towards God and the divine grace and his favor, even while talking about the grace of God. You know, if we look back there to Leviticus 18, 20, 25 or so, I, I want to show you a progression that came to mind. And as those thoughts came, I'll be honest with you, I just kind of threw them down. Amen. But listen up and, 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 and then, you know, jot it down. Maybe you could, I don't want you to get too distracted here. But grace doesn't somehow allow the holiness of God to be put on hold. And I think that's a real mistake some of us have made. When we, when we see grace being impregnated the way it is today, it is saying it doesn't matter what you do right now. That's really what that's saying. And that's, what, that's what's being taught in many, many places. Amen? I call them halfway houses. <laughs> They're halfway there, but not all the way. You know, in Leviticus, I want to show you our downfall. And you will, you will be able to see this with me, especially those of you who are close to my age. I will not look at anybody. We're on this downward spiral. We know that we live in a sex-charged world and nation. We know that America is putting out pornography, and I think we're pretty high on the scale in terms of the billions of dollars we're making on that. I'm doing this for a reason. Amen? Doing this for a reason, to kind of show how we got there, show where we're actually at. In Leviticus in eight, verse 18, it talks about and this is the progression now. Uh, 1 through uh, 17 in Leviticus, it talks about incest. Okay? It's talking about near kin and all of that. We see a lot of that going on today, don't we? There's a progression going on. Then he, in 18, he says now, uh, adultery is uh, forbidden. We hardly raise an eyebrow today if somebody's caught in an adulterous affair. We say that's their private business. I want to show you how we got there, friends. Isn't that something? You know, the next thing he talks about in verse 21, 21 he forbids the sacrificing of their children to the god Moloch, which they actually did. They're, 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 and, and, and today, we're sacrificing our children through abortion simply for the convenience of the mother. That's become commonplace. We don't hardly even hear anything about it now, do we? I want you to see the progression, how this is moving. Adultery began to break up the family. It began to say that's okay. It began to, uh, you know, mess things up along that way. And then all of a sudden, kids got in the way because now mothers think, have bought into the, wor the, the message of the world that, hey, you know, you don't need to be at home. You need to be out expanding your horizon. You need to, you need to grab a hold of this and you need to grab a hold of that. So they're, they're reshaping motherhood and trying to reshape women, right? So children are now in their way to their success. Uh, uh, amen? That's a progression. So we've got adultery. We've got the abortion of children, the desensitization of motherhood. And the next thing we've got 
In verse 22 of Leviticus 18, it forbids homosexuality. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Listen here, church. Do not let anybody tell you that's the Old Testament. And here's what they're going to tell you. I'll tell you exactly what they're going to tell you. They're going to say, well, they, the Bible said, don't put this cloth next to that cloth. Here's your answer. Then don't do it. <laughs> that's what you believe? Don't, don't do it. So what's the argument? <laughs> Hello? What, what, is that what it says? Yeah, it says that. Well, then don't do it. But that doesn't negate what he just said here. See, what they want to do is pull you off the argument. Amen? That's what they want to do. They want to pull you off the argument. Well, just don't do it. Do you believe that's the word of God? Well, it says so. You sure? It says so. Well, don't do it. Because it says right here that this is an abomination to God, this homosexuality. And he says, as a result of that, the whole land is defiled. Therefore, I do visit the iniquity upon, uh, there, thereof upon it, and the land itself committeth, um, committeth out her uh, uh, inhabitants. In other words, we're in for some serious, serious judgments. Amen? That, that's what's going to happen. Because we've started at a place and got progressively worse. You remember I talked about iniquity uh, compounding itself, adding to iniquity. One thing leads to another. Boy, this here's, I, I do away with that. Then that opens the gate for this. That opens the gate for that. And all this stuff that one time was unthinkable is now thinkable. Now here's something that will, will just kind of gross you out and it's not meant to do that. But do you, I didn't write it down and I, I meant not to say it, but I'm going to say it. Do you know what the next step after homosexuality is? Bestiality. And we frown at that, don't we? Fifty years ago, we frowned at same-sex marriage. Fifty years ago, we said that would never happen. It's here. I'll let you do the research, but if you'll go online, you will find that this sin of bestiality has already begun. Once man turns from God, he has no direction. He has no standard of truth. He has no conscience towards anything but self-pleasure. That's it. Nothing else matters. And we see that today. Nothing else matters. You say, well, let's just let them folks be who they are. Did you catch the news just yesterday? They said, what is the next step with this? Now that we've got the same-sex marriages and we've got couples and children, now the demand is it must, this lifestyle must be taught in school to, to resensitize our children to that lifestyle. Church, we can't be silent anymore. We can't. We ought to be angry inside. We ought to be agonizing inside. We ought to be on our knees before God. God, help us to get the word out. To save some souls. We're not going to change this world. They're going down. Thank God. He reached out and snatched us out of the, the fires of hell. I don't stand up here proud to condemn any. I only stand up here to say there's some out there that, don't, that can be saved if we would go and not be silenced by those who are saying, be quiet. Amen? Be quiet. Ezekiel tells us, he explains that God, why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Listen to this. He says, behold, this, is, this was the iniquity of, of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of, of, of bread. Tell me we're not a prosperous nation. <laughs> Abundance of idleness. How many cruise ship uh, uh, coupons have you gotten in your mail? Everything's about 
relaxing. Everything's about fun. Everything's about having a good thing. Everything's about me. I'm not saying there's something wrong with vacation. That ain't what I'm saying. But let me just tell you something. We're going broke. <laughs> Trying to feel good. Ain't that amazing? When God said, I, I give you my peace. <laughs> and I will tell you something. I got some kind of peace that just, just passes all understanding. I got, I got what you need. I want, I want you to be happy too. I want you to have joy. I want you to have some peace too. I'll give it to you. You don't have to rob your bank to get it. Oh, Lord. You know, when I began to rap, I got to thinking about Jude. He says, Beloved, when I have... Uh, I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needed for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith and which was once delivered unto the saints. We're not contending anymore in our own personal lives, nor are we actually going out with a mindset to take the gospel. With, with, we're looking just, well, I, Lord, I hope I, uh, an opportunity comes up. No, 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 no. That's who we are. I told somebody the other, way, the other day, I, I just don't preach. I'm not just a pastor. That's who I am. This is who I am. God created me this way. That's who I am. I can't help what I do because that's what I am. We've got to have that kind of attitude. This is what I am. And if that's what I am, when I go out, here's what I am supposed to do. <laughs> Are you with me here? I mean, this is not something strange that, oh boy, you know, uh, I wonder if I need to talk to my co -worker. No, that's what I am. I don't have to think about that. Amen? Now, I'm not going to say, I've got to warn you, everybody ain't going to hug and kiss you, when you if you do this stuff. Amen? They're not going to hug and kiss you at all. You'd be running back here and say, Pastor, what happened? <laughs> so I'm telling you ahead of time. But here's something else Jude says to us. He says, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. You hear, the, you hear this, this saying out here now, black lives matter. <laughs> we got to get out of that mess too. Souls matter to God. This foolishness. We're all valuable to God. All our lives, all our souls matter. We got to get that in our head and not divide ourselves with this stinking world. All lives matter. If we allow ourselves to get drawn into these political arguments and political way of thinking when God is saying, you and I can make a difference, not in this world, but in the kingdom of our God. We can make a difference. Amen? And so whoever God sends us to, we ought to look and say, souls matter to God. We've got to take that on. So if you want to talk about some of that other stuff, have at it. I, to me, it don't make no difference. <laughs> it really don't make no difference. Because if the argument is one, one way or the other, it ain't going to add a single soul to the kingdom of God. It's a matter to God. We cannot then be silent about the gospel of Jesus Christ, can we? We can no longer continue to commit the sin of silence. What does it all mean to us? Well, we see the falling away. We all talk about it. It's time to do something about it. We're not going to stop the falling away. 
what we can do, and it's why I saved that Jude 21, 22, 23 for last is we can pull some out of the fire. We can, we can save some. Just like, let me just tell you, we were pulled out of the fire. I bet some of us could think about some things we got into and it almost cost us our life. God pulled us out of the fire. Because he knew down the road. I got a plan for you. Never to harm you. I got a plan for you. And that's what he's saving us for today. We've got to go out and believe that in our heart. Amen. And if we need some help believing that, get on your knees and say, Lord, help my unbelief. <laughs> I want to get there. We don't have to just stay stagnant. God is going to purchase church. I'm summing it up. He is going to do that. And when he does that, some churches are going to explode. I want you to watch how they explode. They're going to explode because of the entertainment they're able to offer. They're going to explode because they have an inclusive message and the gospel includes everybody to be saved, but it is not an inclusive message. An inclusive message means it doesn't matter what you do. God loves you. That's inclusive. Watch for that. Why do I bring it up? Because sometimes we get discouraged. We walk into a church like this. We don't see a whole lot of people sitting around. Now, that's not to say that small churches can be off too. <laughs> but I'm just telling you what the dynamic is going to be. We're going to see people turning away from this. But you know what? As we start being the light God called us to be, we're going to pull some folk out the fire. Amen? And that's, that's good enough for me. And I just thank God for giving us the wisdom and opening our eyes to see because things are going to get tough. They're going to get, you know, to, I mean, this week, things are going to start getting tough. You're going to be able to see it. Amen. And finally, I, I, I've spoken these things really to, to share my heartbeat. But also to stir up the faith in you. The time that God, that Jesus is coming back for his return, not, not on the earth, I'm talking about for the rapture now, is close. I don't know the date. I'm not setting the date. But if we believe God that is not going to visit America on this decision, and he's going to do it because it goes to the root of his creation. He is going to visit America on that. And I don't want us to be afraid when they come after us because they're going to come. They're going to come. You just run on back here and when you get in, we'll lock the door. Stand with me.